it's Jan from Jan Does Reviews and I thought I would continue on today with um, my favorite brands and um, the different products that I have from them and I thought today we would cover Milani. Sorry that's really shiny it's hard to see. Um, here we go. There you go Milani. Uh, I don't have a lot of products from Milani but the ones that I do have I really really love. So, um, that sounds interesting. Keep watching. Um, I have already put on my skincare and, um, put my eyebrows on and my tubing mascara that I always do, but because I do have a couple of, uh, complexion sort of products that you put on before the rest of your makeup, like your concealers and stuff, I haven't gone that far. Um, so I'm going to talk about the two things that I want to apply that are Milani that you'll see me apply and then I'll finish up with the um, concealer and powder and stuff and then I'll come back and talk about um, the other things that I have. The Milani eyeshadow primer. I resisted uh, trying this for a while. I had heard from other um, people in you know on YouTube and Instagram uh, in the beauty community that really really love and swear by this and um, I was just really hooked on the Urban Decay uh, original primer potion and I didn't see the sense in buying anything else to try because that stuff lasts forever and um, anyway I finally did run out and then I went on a eyeshadow primer journey I had gotten a couple in subscription boxes that just weren't really what I liked. They have more of a gripping texture than a smoothing finish to the primers. So um, I ended up getting the Milani eyeshadow primer, which feels exactly like the Urban Decay original primer potion, the one that comes in the little purple tube. Um, I have it, I ordered them both from Ulta and they both feel identical and um, I really like them. They're very <sighs> smoothing to, I, they don't like, you know, I've got very wrinkly textured eyelids. I am not gentle with the eye area. I know I should be, but I'm just not. I never have been. Um, I rub my eyes with a lot of pressure, probably far more than I should ever use, but I do it's done the damage is there <laughs> I can't take it back now um, so this does help smooth it some it doesn't you know completely erase and it doesn't cancel out a lot of redness that I might have but it helps and it leaves a very silky finish so um, I really like that about it and then there's the Milani soft focus glow complexion enhancer now this is not a primer. I know a lot of people use it as a primer. You certainly can. It's in a little um, push top format. You don't have to squeeze the bottle or anything. Um, it goes on very pearly. It comes in a couple of shades. This is the light. I think it's light fair, fair light. Um, nude glow, excuse me. But it's recommended for fair to light skin tones. So, um, there are other shades that are deeper. Um, it's not glittery. It's just a real soft pearlescent glow to the skin. You can wear it by yourself. Um, it has a, um, I'll pump some out there for you. It does have a tint to it, but, um, it's not an unnatural looking tint. Um, it blends into your skin. It's very sheer and it just leaves that pearlescent glow behind. Can you see from the lights where it's hitting it where it leaves a little bit of shine? So um, it's very forgiving to texture which is a key thing for me. Uh, but I like this more as a moisturizer than a luminizer or um, primer. It is very hydrating. Um, before hyaluronic acid started being on absolutely everything, it was already in this one, along with cucumber extract and um, rose water. So 
all things that are there all three of those are very good for your your skin um, doesn't matter if you have oily skin normal or dry I don't know how long it will last on oily skin but on my normal to dry skin um, it lasts all day it feels very nice it's silky it has a finish just like the eyeshadow primer it leaves your skin feeling not matte but not super glowy either it's really nice and um, I'm getting ready to put that on I'm going to um, put on my color corrector and concealer and do a little powder under the eyes and then I will come back and we'll talk about the next set of products that I want to put on my face get ready to speed up in three two one So, um, I've put all of this on. As you can see, it's not overly glowy. It's just when the, sun, the light sun from my window here hits, you can see a real soft pearlescent glow right here. It's, you know, where I have it powdered. Very pretty. Very natural. Um, not glittery at all. You can see it doesn't emphasize texture. So, really, really like these products. Um, next up, I only have, sorry, I'm, uh, disheveled. I've had four hours, maybe less sleep. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night, 2 a.m. to be exact, and, uh, yeah, couldn't go back to sleep. Yay! <laughs> so, on with the show. Um, next up, let's do some eyes. Um, this is the Milani Soft and Sultry Palette. And Smitha Deepak is a um, makeup artist here on YouTube, and she recommended this as a much more affordable alternative to the Natasha Denona palette. And I don't know about that because I don't have the Natasha Denona Glam palette, but uh, it is cool toned and it is lovely. The shadows are pigmented. They blend out easily. There's a good mix of matte and shimmers. Um, if you're curious, though, about the uh, Shadow Kiss from Alter Ego that has been tested out as a dupe, here they are side by side. So you can see. Obviously, you don't get quite as many shadows, but you've got a lot of the same similar tones. And I like that this one has a black in it. So, just for curiosity, um, there's that. Now, oh, my plan is to go in with this shade. Then I will deepen it up slightly with this one. I'm going to put this shimmer on my lid. I'm going to blend out everything. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to use this peachier or whiter toned cream. These are both matte. The center is a shimmer. <clears throat> I will deepen up my outer V more than likely with this gray brown down here. And um, then I'm going to put on some lashes, which Milani does not make lashes. It's one of the few things they don't make. They do make brushes, but I don't own any. Um, my local Walmart and drugstores don't carry the brushes in the Milani display. So 
I've just never thought to buy them. I don't, I've never been to Milani's website either. So, um, what I buy is usually what I can find here locally. And, um, if it's a specific thing that I am looking for that my local stores don't carry, then I usually turn to Ulta or, um, Amazon. So, uh, that's the game plan and got some brushes here. We're getting ready to speed up again through application in three two, one, now. got my eyeshadow on I've got a set of lashes on um, this one feels a little weird I'm not sure if it's on all the way it feels like it might be just a little bit loose but we're gonna go with it here we go and like I said these eyeshadows are not patchy at all they've got great pigment they blend easily um, I did go in with um, this shimmer cream shade over the top of the pinky tone or yeah this pinky tone because I didn't realize that was a matte oops and I wanted a little shine to the center of my mobile lid so um yeah and then i just went underneath with the same um colors that i used up top along you know my lower lash line put some lashes on a little mascara on the lower lashes just a little bit i don't want to get crazy with it and then let's do some face products shall we um Milani makes really, really great cheek products. Um, I have a couple. This is 09 Dolce, and this is their baked bronzer. And it's in that horrible packaging like Physicians Formula uses. I hate the packaging, but I love the product that's inside. Um, this has a luminous overspray, but once the overspray is gone, it is not shiny at all. It's very matte, um, but it's not a flat matte. It's, you know, there's your mirror and brush underneath. Some of the brushes are good. Some are just scratchy and bad. Um, I really like this bronzer. It's a little, it's not, uh, it's more golden than I would typically wear, so it ends up looking a little orange on my very pink cheeks. But um, it's still, it's not unnatural looking. It's, 
as long as you don't get heavy handed with it, it's beautiful. But they have other, of course, they have other bronzers um, with different undertones. Um, I find for myself, a very cool undertone or a very red undertone look the most natural on my face. So with this one being more golden and yellow, mm, it's a little iffy. Um, their blush. They have a luminous blush line and um, this is a baked powder blush. Most people rave about Luminoso and it being a dupe for um, the NARS orgasm. Well, I had it, and you know what? I didn't care for it. It wasn't a favorite. I kept using it because everybody raved about it, so I figured there's gotta be something I just don't understand about it, but I just, I don't like the tone on me, and I have NARS orgasm, and I don't like it on me either, so. <laughs> it's just the color just isn't my choice. But I do have the Rose de Oro, which is just a fancy way of saying rose gold. Um, and I do like it. Now, I'm not a huge fan of luminous blushes. I have decluttered almost all of them. This is one of the few that I kept because it's not glittery. It's very pearly on the cheeks like the um, Soft Focus Glow. So, it doesn't end up looking overdone and weird. And then, um, the next one that I want to talk about is their highlighter. And this is their baked highlighter in Dolce Perla. There we go. And their their baked products are just they're beautiful. If you've got texture on your skin, do yourself a favor and check out some Milani baked cheek products. It doesn't emphasize it at all. It's just it's lovely. This is one of my favorite highlighters. This and the the J-Cat Beauty loose highlighter. And this one, although the packaging looks like it's like this, it is not. It's just, it's, there's no mirror, no weird thing. The blush though is. So, yeah. Kind of odd that this doesn't have that, but um, again, this is a pearl highlight just like it says it's not glittery it's got just the subtlest pink undertone to it it's beautiful my probably my most used highlighter out of the few that i do have i probably have less than 10 highlighters total i just don't i don't accent because i have so much texture right here so i don't i don't find the need to highlight often so, that being said, we're gonna slap some of this stuff on real quick. And I'm not gonna speed through this because it won't take me long. Um, I just use a big fluffy brush, just kind of, you know, pat it in, and then onto the cheeks, and up around my forehead. And then I take whatever's left over here and put it on my nose and my chin. And then I do run it down my neck to help um, hide my double chin. Some things work better than others. Contour works better. There's very little kick up in the pan, just the tiniest bit. It's not overwhelming at all. Now we're gonna go in with the Rose de Oro. There we go. And also I use a big fluffy brush and I just buff that onto my cheek. Take a little bit up top. I have always done this since I started wearing makeup in the 80s because it flatters my round face shape. I know it's been really popular with this whole foxy look and blush draping and all that crap. It just depends on your face shape, whether it's gonna work for you or not, you know? Craziness. I keep seeing all these techniques that were all the rage when I was learning to put on makeup 
and people are acting like they're brand new and they're not. <laughs> They've just been forgotten. And now we're gonna go in with the Dolce Parla. And I like a denser highlighting brush. I don't even think this is for a highlighter, but that's what I use it for. And then I just buff it right on to my cheekbone where I want it. So I have a very precise placement. Then I put a little bit on my nose. And I will add a little more again to my cupid's bow and then right here at the curve of my bottom lip after I put on some lip products, which we're going to do now. Um, I do not have a lip liner. I did have some from Milani, but the tones weren't what I wanted, so I decluttered them. So, sorry. I do, however, have one of their Ludicrous lip glosses. And I found this, I don't know, January, February, I think. I love this. The color is beautiful. The formula is really nice. It's not sticky at all. It's thick enough that you feel it on your lips, but it's not uncomfortable or weird. Um, mine is in the shade 140 um, Fanny Pack. Yeah, what a weird name. But anyway, I'm going to, I put on a lip gloss because my lips are really dry. I'm just gonna pat that in and put on a liner real quick. We'll top it up with some lip gloss and um, we'll pretty much wrap this show up, won't we? Here we go. And the only reason I use a lip liner when I'm putting a gloss on is to accentuate uh, my upper lip mainly because it's disappearing with old age. And then we're going to top that off with some ludicrous fanny pack. I also like the shape of the doe foot. It's that diamond shape, so it's very easy to put your lip gloss on. It hugs your lip. And the tip if you have a more pronounced cupid's bow like I do, it's very easy to, to get those little points. Now, what I like to do to add a little more shine is I take my finger and I just tap it right there at my cupid's bow. And then right there at the curve, center of the curve there, at my bottom lip. So it just catches the light. So those are all the things that I own from Milani. I do not have a face spray. I had one at one time. It was a dewy finish and I didn't like it. It looked glittery. So just saying, sorry. Um, this is my finished look. Narcissistic montage moment. So you can see all the glowiness on me. Okay, that is um, my small stash of Milani. I do have one more favorite brand that I plan on covering. It's also not quite as many products as um, my Wet n Wild and Elf and ColourPop. But Oh for Cosmetics is coming up. I do have a few things from them, enough to make 
a mostly full face of Ofra. So I thought that would be kind of fun to do too. And I do like the things that I own from them. Um, I don't think I've decluttered anything that I have bought or received from subscription boxes. Um, which honestly, that's where I've gotten a lot of it from. Um, so I will cover that in my next favorite brands video. But this is it for today. It's very affordable. Um, Milani is not, of course, as inexpensive as Elf or Wet n Wild, but they have nicer packaging. I mean, granted, I don't really care for the thick compacts that they do, but the packaging in general is nicer. It doesn't feel quite as, um, there it is. doesn't feel quite as cheap as this wet and wild blush <coughs> please excuse me in comparison there you go um, yeah this is 0.12 ounces and the wet and wild is um, 0.21 so you do get more product for less money, but this is not baked. And I don't know, I presume that a baked formula is slightly more complicated. It seems like it would be. It seems like this stuff, you know, you pour it into the pan, press it and put it in the oven to dry. This one seems like it would be more difficult. So, yeah. Not sure about that since I don't manufacture makeup, but it just seems like it would be a more complicated process. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that I have not covered that I usually do. Um, it's readily available. Like I said, it's not the most inexpensive at your local drugstore or Walmart, but it's also not the most expensive that you're going to find. Um, Pixie and Honestly, Revlon is kind of pricey for what it is. Um, L'Oreal and Milani, I would say, are kind of neck and neck in price-wise. Um, like I said, they're still affordable, but they're not the cheapest that you can get. That doesn't mean that the quality is any worse or better. It just, it's a different offering than what I have in my Wet n Wild and Elf and ColourPop. These are um, more glowy products and um, most of them are honest, most of them are baked. So I do have other baked formulas that I like, um, mainly Laura Geller, but for drugstore, this one's much more affordable than Laura Geller, no offense. Um, that's it for now, I'm just gonna leave off here. I feel like I am missing an important point that I usually cover, but you know, if I did, sorry. Um, I have other videos coming. I've done, you know, the month end wrap ups that I usually do. I don't know if those are posted yet or not. I know I've uploaded them. I just don't think I have, well, I've edited them is what I'm trying to say. I don't know that I've uploaded them to YouTube. So, um, stay tuned. I will have more content coming. And if you don't mind, hop over to my Instagram. Same name. Jen does reviews. You know you want to. All the cool cats are doing it. No, really. Um, my goal is to try and get, and I'm close on Instagram, uh, to getting 100 subscribers by the end of the year. But I, I just keep hanging right under 60 on um, YouTube. So I'd really like to get to at least 100 um, by the end of the year. So if you wouldn't mind, please consider subscribing. It would mean the absolute most to me. Um, help me achieve my goals and dreams. <laughs> All right, that's it for sappy crap. Um, stay happy, stay healthy, make good choices. See you in my next video. Bye.